Hello everyone. The liturgical year, also known as the church year, is divided into several seasons. During the year, the church relives the saving events of Christ's life, death and resurrection. Hence, the year consists of Advent, Christmas, ordinary time after Epiphany, Lent, Easter and ordinary time after Pentecost. Each season is colored and coded with appropriate scriptures and prayers assigned to match the theme of the season to enhance both individual and community worship. Now we are in the season of Lent. Lent is about preparation for the celebration of the death and resurrection of Christ. During this time we are required to do some form of penance such as fasting, prayer and acts of charity for our sin. Let me give you a short summary of the Lenten reflection so far. We began Lent with a mark of ashes on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday as a reminder of our own mortality, repentance and faith. On the first Sunday of Lent, we read about Jesus' time in the wilderness where he fasted and prayed and was tempted by the devil. After that, he started preaching with a call to repentance and belief in the gospel. All in all, we were reminded of three things. 1. Because Jesus endured the same temptations that we face, he identifies himself with our struggles and gives us the help and grace we need to resist temptation. 2. Repentance is not merely feeling sorry or remorseful for sin, and its consequences, or even being willing to turn from one's sin, but turning to the Lord Jesus to be saved from sin. That's why Lent is a journey with Jesus. 3. Believing in the Gospel means taking Jesus at his word and believing in his promises without doubting what he says is true. Last Sunday, it was second Sunday, we read how the Lord bid Abraham to offer his only son Isaac as a sacrifice and how the Lord found favor with him and promised to bless him in abundance. And we also read about the transformation of Jesus before his disciples and God's declaration that Jesus was a beloved son to whom believers must listen. In all, we learned three things. One. Like Abraham, we are also tested by God to make our faith known. He allows struggles and adversities to as tests to prove our faith in Him. Through these tests, God is also preparing our lives for the great blessings that we could experience. 2. Like Abraham, we must be willing to surrender and obey God in everything, trust in Him and His will. 3. We must listen to Jesus, for He is the beloved Son of God. Yes, obedience is a hallmark of our genuine faith and love and devotion to God. Jesus repeatedly has said that only obedient people will inherit everlasting life, peace and joy. What do we have to obey? Jesus explicitly shows that we must first and foremost obey the Ten Commandments. For instance, when a man asked Jesus what he must do to possess eternal life, Jesus said to him, If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. The man said, Which ones? Jesus replied, You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false witness, honor your father and mother, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Friends, these are not new commandments. They had already been given to people through Moses and of which we read today from the book of Exodus. 1. I am the Lord your God. You shall worship the Lord your God and Him only shall you serve. That is, we ought to fear, love and worship only God. We must demonstrate complete love and total loyalty to God. 2. 
you shall not have other gods before me that is we must not worship idols of any kind that would distract us from our devotion to god none and nothing should take precedence over god and his commandments we must love god with all of our heart mind and soul 3 you shall not take the name of the lord your god in vain that is we must not use the name of god in, in an improper or irreverent way we must not curse swear lie or deceive in god's name but instead use it in prayer praise and thanksgiving to him and to call upon him in times of trouble four remember to keep holy the sabbath day that is we must keep the seventh day the day of the lord holy and a rest day for everyone employers and employees masters and servants we should abstain from doing unnecessary work and any activity that may profane the holiness of god as the day is dedicated or set apart for the worship of god we are obliged to go to temples or houses of prayer to worship god when we read or hear the word of god we should not despise it but instead gladly listen and learn it 5 honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the lord your god is giving you that is we should not ignore despise ridicule and anger our parents but instead honor serve obey love and respect them to whom we own our life and who have given us the knowledge of god 6 you shall not kill that is we should not harm or take another's life instead we must respect and help protect life 7 you shall not commit adultery adultery shows a level of disrespect to the commitment between two persons but it is not just to reserved for a marriage union or spouses who are unfaithful to each other in the gospel of matthew jesus expands this commandment to include lust both before and after marriage hence it is a call to lead a sexually pure and decent life in words and deeds and husbands and wives must respect love and honor each other 8 you shall not steal stealing can take many forms including cheating someone or even delaying paying back someone what you owe him or her so the commandment calls us not to steal others property earned by deception or by crooked business deals pay unfair salaries or exploit others weaknesses to make money instead we must respect and safeguard others belongings 9 you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor that is we should not destroy the honor and reputation of others through lies slander and gossip instead we should be honest in our relationship with others we must defend others and think and speak well of them 10 You shall not covet your neighbor's wife you shall not covet your neighbor's house nor his male or female servant nor his cattle nor anything else that belongs to him To covet means to crave or desire especially in excessive or improper ways It is the earning to possess something or someone that belongs to others It is our wanting for more than we would legitimately deserve or that would be our rightful share. This commandment tells us that we should not lure, force or trick anyone into inheriting or stealing anything or anyone that belongs to others. Instead, we should be pure in thought and desire and we must help and be of service to others. friends these commandments 
may appear to be ancient and obsolete, but they are a practical standard for life for all ages. Yes, Jesus reminds us that obedience to God begins with accepting the Ten Commandments as the permanent standard for our values and for, for our behavior. Jesus says, anyone who infringes on even one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. But the person who keeps them and teaches them will be considered great in the kingdom of heaven. Friends, we can disregard or disobey God if we choose and it may bring immediate relief to the situation but it will cause us emotional, mental, physical and spiritual suffering and it will grieve our Lord. Lent is an opportune time to examine our hearts and actions in light of our obedience to God. Amen. God bless you.